Hey guys, you're listening to uh, Andreas Talks Art. Today, I had the great pleasure of sitting down with Iko and Corny, the creators of Coco Collab, and you can find them on Instagram at Coco Collab. I'm kind of curious how each of you individually got into art. Um, you want to start? <laughs> um, I got into art, I mean, basically since I was really little when yeah. I could hold a crayon, but I started taking it more seriously after my dad passed away and I only applied to one art college actually. And yeah, I guess I just felt like I needed to pursue my passion and then I went to school and that's how I got into art. Okay. Tell them what happened originally when you got into art oh, school. Oh, what? Oh, they accidentally put me in the fine art department. I actually wanted to be a graphic designer because okay. I was like, oh yeah, I have to like make money and do all this <laughs> because I'm a realist as well. Right. Uh, but then I saw what the graphic design students were doing. And then I saw what the fine art students were doing. And I'm like, this is way funner. So I just stayed, stayed in it. Oh, yeah. no way. Just by accident. Yep. That's crazy. I actually went to school for graphic design. So I kind of wish I was in school for fine arts, but that's awesome. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I, I've always made art like my whole childhood. That was something I was always like just doodling on papers or homework or whatever. Um, but yeah, in college I went, I was going to maybe go for sociology or psychology or something. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. Thought I wanted to be like a forensic scientist because I would watch like CSI all the time. <laughs> and then, I don't know, I started going to concerts really early and uh, meeting other people who were pursuing their passions and just one day decided that I was going to pursue art and ended up getting my bachelor's in art. Uh, yeah. Cool. How's that? So you guys both have degrees in art and then after college, you're kind of just set out into the world. So what did you do then? Did you get jobs or did you just start doing art on your own? Oh, man, I feel like I just needed some time to go a little crazy because I never <laughs> really had it. And so I, I did some traveling. Um, Where'd you go to? I went to Southeast Asia. Okay. Sorry, my dog is being very distracting. Peanut! <laughs> um, so, oh yeah, after school, I graduated from school in Minnesota and then I moved out to Colorado. I had a lot of friends who were like, we're going to Colorado to be musicians and artists and, and all that stuff. So I ended up moving out here, um, but didn't really get into art full time right away. I started, I started working in some restaurants and that's actually where we met. We met working in a restaurant and then it wasn't really till I met Iko that we, well, I started going more full time. We were still working at restaurants too, though. Wait, full time with art? Yeah. Yeah, because you've done more photography and stuff on your own. Yeah, that's true. Um, but yeah, do you want to tell them about? Oh, yeah. So I traveled around in Southeast Asia, and then I actually got stuck in Japan, and then I ended up in Korea, and I couldn't afford a ticket back to the mainland in, <laughs> um, yeah, back to Washington, where I had security and possibly a job to return to oh my god so then i could stay with my mom in hawaii and i was there for like two years um working in a restaurant and then i was like i just gotta get off this island i'm not gonna i felt like i wasn't accomplishing anything and like wasn't using my degree um so then i left and i went to colorado and started working at ale house which is where we met okay yeah so is it true you guys did your uh first collab together at Cervantes yeah what uh what inspired you to like do a collab together well I didn't really like Iko at first when I first met her yeah oh, shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but then Iko was being all like I know where to get the art supplies she I was, was like, like she's gonna be my friend I know she was like trying to make me be her friend and so I kind of gave it it was like all right so I invited her out to the show to the show at Cervantes and I brought a blank canvas and we both just went at it and finished a piece basically by the end of the night. And we're yeah. like, huh, we got something special here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because I didn't really have any friends that made art. And I moved back to the mainland to create art 
essentially. And so I was like, this girl makes art and I want to make art and she gonna be my friend. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then ever since then, well, we took a little break. Yeah, we did take a little break. Yeah, we got in a fight. <laughs> and then... But yeah, since we got back together pretty much full time. Yep. Like full, full time where we, everything else is our side job. Yeah. In the state already. How has it been uh, collabing with each other full time? Like, how's your styles meshed together and developed? Um, we have very similar styles and like what we like to paint. And I feel like that's why it works so well, us mm -hmm. collaborating, because um, we have the same visions and what we want to say and how we want to bring our creative light to the community and kind of broadcast it that way. So. It's actually been pretty easy. I think yeah. the main thing is when we spend a little bit too much time together and we don't have enough alone time. Mm. Yeah, we bicker like a old married couple. Yeah. <laughs> but, Kicking buckets and stuff. Uh, but yeah. not on purpose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, I mean it's been it's been pretty organic and fluid. And I feel like throughout all of it, like no matter what we're going through in our life, Coco Collab has always just kind of maintained the same like foundation and vision and then yeah. we both wanted to get into murals right. and i feel like the past couple of years getting into murals has just really strengthened our business yeah as well as our our art practice and our friendship yeah and we also when there's a like a hard period or like let's say we're experiencing like you know anxiety or mental health isn't quite there like we'll spend a lot of time in our own personal fields, I guess, like mm -hmm. I'll create my own art and uh, she'll create her own art. And then when we come back together, it's kind of like we take what we learned or like a new experiment that came out successfully, mm -hmm. we'll bring it to the table. And so yeah. then we can kind of be like, oh, hey, look, this is all this new information and this new skill. And um, it's been really nice. Yeah, so, it keeps us from getting stagnant. I feel like, yeah, like we both know when it's time to work on our own stuff. Yeah. And um yeah. So we've been doing that a little more recently as well. Yeah. That's cool. Do you guys feel like you do more work together or more work by yourselves? Um, Probably I, together. Yeah, yeah. I would say together. Especially recently. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. even like if you think about like, because she does a lot of the, the grant writing and stuff and I'll make sure like our portfolio is good and take on like social media and like do all that. Um, but when we're creating these things, we're usually together. And so it's like, we're still kind of, you know, bouncing ideas off of what each other. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Especially since we're running a business, I feel like there's more things that go into running a business than just painting your own pieces right, right. or whatever you're going through or whatever. So I do think like when it comes to the actual time spent, it's probably for Coco. Yeah, for sure. That'd be nice though. If we could just paint. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wanted that. We can talk about one day like having an intern or like or oh yeah that someone. sounds nice <laughs> <laughs> or even hiring someone to do the back end stuff because that takes a lot away from Coffee? creating yes yeah i'm sure that is the the issue with trying to make your art your full-time thing is there's a lot of other stuff you got to focus on yeah and sometimes mm -hmm. we're like oh my gosh like we haven't created in like small canvas work in such a yeah. long time and yeah. So lately we've been doing that because we're like, why isn't our work selling? But then we don't, we don't have any work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll spend a lot of time sometimes on the computer doing designs for especially like mural applications are pretty extensive sometimes. So sometimes you can spend like a couple weeks creating designs that don't even get selected or you have to rework a bunch. And then all of a sudden yeah. you're like, well, two months and I haven't touched a paintbrush, you know? Right. Yeah. Has that ever happened? Two months? Two months. I feel like it's happened to me more than you. Oh. Yeah, I get stuck more on the mm. computer, I think. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, speaking of murals, how, why'd you, what made you guys want to get into painting big scale murals and how'd you get into getting mural gigs? I do mean it. I don't know. I, well, I, uh, there's this guy, and his name is Detour. Um, yeah. And he's a pretty big name out in Denver, Colorado. And he actually helped us get our very first wall because yeah. we, there's always like that point when you're like, okay, I know I can do murals and I want to do that, but I don't have like the resources or I don't know how to get into it mm -hmm. kind of thing. And so you just kind of like we went to, um, the Rhino Art Meeting, and that's where we met yeah. Detour, and we've already heard of him through a couple of other people. Um, 
And so he helped us out and was like, oh, hey, I know this wall, but it's not going to be paid, but I have a bunch of extra spray paint. Yeah. This, this, and this. And we were like, all right, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah I mean, let's do it. Sometimes getting into murals can be so difficult because people are, they're giving you a wall. You know, sometimes right. it's external, sometimes it's in their home and it's a lot of um, trust. Yeah. Um, but I think, I mean, we had a lot of friends who are already doing murals. Yeah. There's a pretty awesome mural commu muralist community out here in Denver. So I feel like those people just inspire us in general. And we kind of got to this point where we were like, I think we can do that. Like, I yeah. think we can figure out how to make our work large scale. And then as soon as the first one kind of went, like got going, there's all these small Denver events or Colorado events that kind of help smaller artists get in. Yeah. Okay. And then you might not get paid as much, but you get paid a little bit. And then I feel like it kind of just kind of went up a step every single time where we're getting paid a little more. We're getting trusted with bigger walls. Yeah. Then we're on a lift. <laughs> then, yeah. So, and just, you also learn a lot in the process of doing a mural too, because I don't know. I feel like the work that we were creating, it was so like we would either do it live painting and wouldn't touch it again, mm -hmm. or you know. But we were able to, you know. But also at the same time, it's like surprising because I look at our work beforehand and I'm like, yikes! I can't believe <laughs> somebody like actually trusted us to paint this wall. I know. And our work used to be very like organic and in the moment. Yeah. And then with murals, it's forced us to be very planned out and mm -hmm. to even have more design elements. And to, yeah, it's like forced us to work in a different way. So do you um, fully plan out your murals before you paint them then? Yeah, recently. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, the stuff we do now is application based. Yeah, and they want to see your mm -hmm. design before they're like, oh yeah, go for it. Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> you know, murals are different. They have to be like appropriate for the community right. and include a lot of the community. Yeah. And there's more things to hop over than just, oh, look what I painted. Yeah, sometimes we'll have to present in front of a panel of people. Um, Which so we're horrible at. Oh, we're so bad. Every we're time like, oh, we oh. And then I have this thing where I get really monotone. And then Aiko just talks and, and then I stutter and then it's oh, just, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, anyways, it's fine. But Every time we get interviewed, we never, they're like, oh, you're a finalist. And then they interview us and they're like, nah. Uh. <laughs> but if it's ever just like our work that we're presenting and then we have to write something up, I feel like usually we get picked yeah. a lot of those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. So you guys said before that, um, so I know you guys work from, work with a large, uh, array of mediums from doing poor painting to large scale murals and i kind of want to know about your love for crappy pens <laughs> oh, we love crappy pens I have yeah the whole drawer over here yeah yeah i mean it's like for whatever reason i feel like we create some of the best drawings of our lives with like a little big pen that's almost out of ink it's just because like that's what we have been drawing with forever <laughs> and, yeah. like in yeah. high school and stuff yeah. instead of taking your chemistry test you're just like yeah i'm gonna doodle that's this. true i never like, thought about that so you, you know, get really good at using that exactly and you're like, you're like it's nice almost stuff. out it's totally fine yeah. <laughs> like, ways to like get the ink out and yeah. stuff and there's just like a feeling that you know happens yeah. it's just, like the best shading that you can <laughs> possibly do and then i feel like pen. when you get like a really nice pen there's like kind of all this pressure and you're like, oh man, like yeah. I bought this really nice pen. I can't waste like, this ink. And like you overthink it or, or it's something. too inky. Where it's it comes true. out and it's oh, like, yeah. it's more like an illustrating pen. And yeah. you're like, okay, well, it's fine. It's too, <laughs> it's too good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's super funny. Um, did, uh, did Post Malone buy one of your art pieces? <laughs> So um, we gave him that piece. Oh, okay. Yeah, we were on. Um, so Snoda is an event in Minnesota, and our one of our friends he ran the event. So we were able to live paint yeah. and like set up our vending, um, just because we had a connection. And so we ended up getting some like VIP bands or whatever. So yeah, live painting is super cool because sometimes you get like these. Sometimes they're like, oh, you have to be here and you can't spill on the ground and, you know, you don't get any free tickets or for your friends or whatever. And then other times it's like, here's your VIP artist pass. You can go wherever you want. I know. And sometimes, like, you'll be meeting, like, Gucci Mane backstage oh, and they're shit. like, what is my life right now? I'm just a lot so, yeah. And we gave this piece to Post Malone because they were like, ooh. And then we, like, got a picture with him. And I don't know. He's yeah. like, is this green? And, and we were like, like yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it was definitely yellow. Yeah, it was 100% <laughs> yeah. yellow. <laughs> so I don't know if he still has that. He probably doesn't remember us, but we have a picture. I go love sharing that picture. Yes, I do. That's epic. Yes, I'm yeah. more of a fan of posties. Oh yeah, I'm. I mean, yeah. I'm like Andy. 
Yeah, candy paint. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun, fun little event we got to do. It was like New Year's, Minnesota, so it was like negative 20 outside. But then it was like this whole convention center was oh. like all lit up and crazy. Yeah, that's a long time ago. It was like Pretty Lights, Gucci Mane, and Post Malone. Yeah, that's it was fun. fun. <laughs> that sounds super fun. <laughs> so I'm wondering about how quarantine affected you guys. I saw you put your art in a VR gallery and you also did uh, Coco quarantine episodes. So how did it affect your guys' arts and like what were the pros and cons of it? Well, honestly, it was kind of awesome. It was really, really good for us. Yeah. And we feel kind of guilty saying that because we know a lot of people it really devastated like everything they were doing and building. Yeah. But I felt like for us, it stripped away all of the other stuff in our life so we could really focus on art. And so we just got to go at it 100% every single day. We had nothing else to do but yeah. make art. Mm -hmm. You know, we had the, none of our other, because I was kind of working at a restaurant, but yeah. I couldn't do that. And you were doing Uber for a while, but we couldn't do that. So it was like, and then we were getting grants from the city and unemployment and stuff. And it was like, whoa, like it just felt like yeah. this beautiful time to like nurture our work and to really take a step and a leap in our career so we got to work yeah. on products and i feel like that and, happened with a lot of people like maybe they didn't know that they were a creative person and then they were yeah. like you know what i have all this time i'm gonna go to the art store and pick out some stuff and like crochet a sweater and then like open my own etsy shop because i have all this time and i thought that was so beautiful but for some, for us it was like We've already been doing this thing and the world has always been so loud and now it's a little bit quieter yeah. and we can really hone in and focus on what we want to you know do yeah i know a lot of your paintings um like you said em uh like emphasize a state of mind i actually have your guys um trials and tribulations painting hung up in my room so i'm wondering uh -huh. what are some of the trials and tribulations you two have gone through as as artists well, here are many. Let me, let me dive into that piece because okay. I feel like that really captures all of that as well. Um, yeah. Rico and I got into this big fight. We were like living together, working together. There was just kind of an eruption in the house that we lived in and we ended up going our separate ways. Um, I go when she traveled abroad and was starting um, like a traveling company. And then I was working for a gallery like that. And I was really excited for all that and all that stuff. But we ended up coming back together after a while and kind of what we talked for a little bit, trying to be like cordial and stuff. Yeah. And then, I don't know, one day we got together and we had a blank canvas and we went to the park and we actually painted that piece in a day. Whoa. It took us like seven hours. It's like a three foot by four foot painting. And I felt like it just kind of depicted all of the stuff we had gone through separately and like all of the stuff we had gone through together. And so that piece kind of felt like us being able to overcome a lot of that and talk through that yeah and it came together like after we didn't talk for a while and it just came together so perfectly yeah. and the figures were so stoic and so strong and mm -hmm. that's how I felt like remending this relationship was I was like okay yeah maybe this happened but it will make us stronger as a team because now we know like the ways and we're like, we communicate a lot better. Oh, way better than we yeah. used to. <laughs> so yeah. sometimes you just need that that separation and then, you know, things become more tightly bonded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that piece was so organic too. I felt like it was just, it was effortless. Yeah. It was just like, we knew exactly what we were painting without knowing, like having a plan. And I feel like that's what Coco's kind of about is both of us just going in it with our own cycle, our own ideas and just, having it come together in a way without forcing it yeah, yeah. that's very cool. do you guys have any tips for people who are starting out and trying to make art their full-time job and their their career i guess just whoa <laughs> <laughs> just don't get discouraged yeah um because there's a lot of self-doubt that comes into it and like imposter syndrome. Like you're like, oh, I'm never going to be good enough. I'm not, gonna be I'm like, not even good at art <laughs> myself. Like, yeah. But if you can get over those hurdles and then, you know, see it all come together, you're like, wow, I'm really happy I didn't give up what I did. Yeah. yeah. I think creating community out here too. I mean, I'm lucky to have Iko because when I'm feeling that way or she's feeling that way, we can bounce back off of each other and help yeah. each other out. But I think it does help like to have some people in the community that you feel like are kind of on a similar 
path to you as in like how serious they're taking it you know because right. I think it has helped to see other people like kind of their journey their struggle and then being able to talk and relate to other people about it you know because then you realize like oh everyone's kind of like in this together you know we're all in one way or another struggling you know yeah and just kind of pushing ourselves as hard as we can I got one last question for you guys and I'm wondering what does art mean to you it's a big question. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like at first, like art for me was a lot of therapy, but overall it has become, it's the universal language of the world. And somebody like, let's say me and Corinne don't speak the same language. We can look at the same painting and get like the same ideas from it and the same concept. So I think that's what's really beautiful and yeah, I guess it's kind of a loaded question because art means so many different things and right. I apply it to so many aspects in my life and it's kind of become a lifestyle. So yeah, it's really important and I'm just grateful to be a part of that universal language. And yeah. 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 Art's cool because it is like this multifaceted tool, you know, like one day you can use it just because you're feeling some stuff and you to work through some things and other days you use it to make a card for your friend's birthday to show how much you appreciate them. And then, you know, another day you can create a huge mural for a community to help them heal some sort of like trauma that's happened in their community. So it's like, it's really what you want it to be most days, you know? And I feel like that feels really good because it doesn't confine you or box you in yeah. for what you have to do with it, you know? Because some days I just need art for me and I don't want to have art for anybody else but me that day, yeah. you know? And other days I'm making art and it's completely not about me, like 0% about me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so I feel like being able to have that same form of expression means so many different things, makes it just like this really powerful act, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. And that's why I really fell in love with street art, too, because it's just that common reminder that we're all just temporary. Like when our mural gets tagged over and stuff, I'm like, yeah, it's just <laughs> like we're we're temporary. Yeah. And it's it is what it is. It and it you out. It does. And it's like, that's how I felt about the sky. I'm like, wow, the sky is just like that reminder that we're all just temporary because it's always shifting and moving. And like, that's how street art is, too. And yeah, it's really beautiful. Yeah, I'm glad we get to do that for our life. Yeah, for our life. For our life. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for listening. Share this with your friends if you liked it. And don't forget to be cool. Peace out. <laughs>